Welcome. I feel led once again to do this this week. I want to say this first off. Do not let this become your replacement to attending a local assembly. You find yourself a local assembly of brothers and sisters and you go. You gather together. But today I have something burning on my heart that I have to get off of my chest. And this is where I feel like I'm supposed to do that. Here today, I want you to understand there's a verse in the book of Jeremiah chapter 16. Uh, there's a couple of verses there. Uh, one of the verses, God is working through Jeremiah, the prophet speaking through Jeremiah. Jeremiah is as if a channel of water and God is the water that is spewing out of him. And he is telling the people of Israel, pay attention to what I just said. The children of Israel, the ones that are supposed to be following God and doing God's will and knowing what they're supposed to do the ones that are supposed to let God work through them so that the nations around them can see God working through them so that they will come to God the children of Israel and he talks about the forefathers of Israel and how it was they turned from God and they worshiped idols and all of these things but then he said something uh, that would be uh, today people might call Jeremiah legalistic people might tell Jeremiah he's acting like a Pharisee people might tell Jeremiah he has this evil spirit of religion but jeremiah told him he said listen you are worse than your forefathers because not only are they, have they done what they've done but he said you are just following the imagination of your own heart and you are not hearkening unto god which makes you worse than the forefathers and whenever i read that my heart broke because i understand that we in the church we in the church listen i make a lot of videos about the things of the world I make a lot of videos about how the world is coming after the church because that's the truth. But my grandpa, who was a pastor uh, before he passed away, this is what he would tell me oftentimes. He would say, Justin, it is not the world keeping people out of church, but it is the church keeping people out of church. And I have found that to be true. And I want you to understand where I'm going with this here today. This is not me telling the church to accept everything under the sun. In fact, this is just the opposite. I want you to understand that we as the church if judgment's going to fall on the United States of America it is going to be because of us because we have failed because we have opened the door and let Satan right in our homes we've let him in our church we've let him in our children's bedrooms we've let him in our living rooms we've okayed him we've said that it's okay and we have sat by idly and let it happen and not only that We've said that anybody that tells us it's wrong, well, they're a Pharisee. Can I tell you about a little bit about the Pharisees? You know what made the Pharisees wrong in Jesus' time? Can I tell you real quick? It was because they had taken God's commandments and God's laws, and they added extra stuff to them. They put extra burden on the children of Israel. It wasn't because they were following God. It was because they had added to. And why did they do that? Well, they did it for power. They did it for control. They also did it so that they could do what they they wanted to do let me say that again they also did it because they wanted to justify what they were doing so they would add to the laws of God to justify themselves. We, as the children of God today, especially in the United States, we have done the same thing. We have added to the things of God and said, well, it's okay because A, B, and C. Or anybody that tells me different, why? They're just a Pharisee. Let me tell you how you'll be a Pharisee. If you add to God's word, you begin to tell people they're all right when they're not all right, and you tell people they're in sin because you don't like something, let me tell you something. There's something real clear in the Word of God. There are things called liberties. And if you tell people that in their liberty they're in sin, you'll, you'll end up in that Pharisee boat. If it is that you are a hypocrite, you will end up in that Pharisee boat. If you preach against something, you speak against something, you teach against something, and then you yourself go out and do that thing, you'll find yourself in the Pharisee boat. But you are not a Pharisee if the Word of God says it's wrong. If you tell people, listen, you got to quit living in adultery. If you tell people, quit messing around with witchcraft and sorcery. If you tell people that you got to quit letting that filth on, G on TV. If you tell people you're not supposed to be a drunkard. If you tell people that you're not supposed, amen, to worship idols. And you're not supposed to put things above God. Can I tell you, that doesn't make you a Pharisee. You're just repeating what God has already stated that you should do. Obedience and a call to obedience doesn't mean people are legalistic. 
but that's what we have done. Listen, there are people that are legalistic, but a call to obedience does not make you a legalistic individual when it comes to serving God because the Word of God is really clear. There's some things we ought not to do, and there's some things that we ought to do, but somewhere in our history in the church of, in the United States of America, it has fell out of fashion to say we should be obedient to God. It has fell out of fashion to say we should follow God. We should do God's will. Instead, we've decided we're going to look like the world and we're going to talk like the world and we're going to dress like the world because we want everybody to know we're normal. We're regular people. I recently read this week a Fox News report because I've, I cruised several different news sites and this Fox News report spoke of a Christian nightclub that was being opened. I forget where it was. But this is what they said. This was the statement from the individual opening it that there were a few rules. No drinking, no smoking, and no twerking. And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> I guess those are pretty good. I don't know. And I kept reading and he said this. He said, I just want people to know that we Christians are normal. And my heart broke because we're not normal. We're not supposed to be normal. That's not what we are called to be. The Bible says that we are a peculiar people. We are to be different. We are to act different. We are to dress different. We are to talk different. We're to live different. And we are to operate within the power and the Spirit of God to be separated different. Not that we are better than, but so that the power of God, so that the wisdom of God, so that the knowledge of God can work through us so people will turn to Him. But if we look like everybody else and we dress like everybody else and we talk like everybody else and we live like everybody else and if we accept everything under the sun, like everybody else then what does it even mean to be a child of God what does it even mean it's like the United States being a country without borders it means nothing it's fluid it's just water falling off a cliff there's no form to it there's no structure do you understand that if judgment comes and not only if it comes when it comes it's going to begin with us. That's what Peter said. He said, look, judgment starts at the house of God. It's because we have failed. I'm just talking to the church. I'm not talking to the lost world right now. Listen, I would love to preach to the lost, but until the church gets their act together and until we start to follow God, how in the world are we ever going to reach the lost? How? Without moving in the power of God. So I believe judgment's going to fall in the United States because we've let Satan in the door. We've let him come up and get cozy in our house and make a sandwich and kick up his feet. We've invited him in, not just in the house, but in the church. We've okayed everything under the sun and said, well, however you want to live, you just go do it. It'll be fine. But that's not what the Word of God teaches us, and it's not what it says. The Word of God teaches us that we're to follow Him. We're to be as obedient as possible. Now listen, the Bible's clear. We're all going to mess up. We're all going to sin. We're all going to have mistakes. We have an advocate with the Father. We need to depend on the grace of God. We don't even depend on being obedient. However, that does not mean we shouldn't be obedient. The Bible is very clear. We depend on the power and the grace of God, but that we still follow Him, that we still do His will, that we still do the best we can. But you see, the church has said, no, that's legalistic. That's pharisaical nonsense well we can't get people to come in we can't be able to come in the church because we've told people that you shouldn't live in adultery or because we've told people you shouldn't fornicate or because we've told people you shouldn't be a drunkard or a liar we've told people that you shouldn't worship idols that you put and put you shouldn't put things above God you shouldn't put things above the commands of God and the things of God can I tell you real quick can I give you a real quick indicator you say Justin I don't serve no idols really is there anything you wouldn't give up for God or is there anything you won't do that's become your idol let me put it to you another way. What's the excuse that you keep skipping your local assembly? Has that potentially become your idol? Think about it now. I'm not talking about folks that ain't able-bodied. I'm talking about folks that are able-bodied, that have the health, that are able, yet there's always something. There's always something there. That's Listen to me. Going to church doesn't mean you're going to heaven, but it's an awful good indicator of where your heart is. So where's your heart at? 
And you say, well, Justin, you're preaching against the church. You're telling me today that the church, amen, has really tr fallen away. In a lot of ways, we are. But we are to still gather together. And somebody, somebody has to be the people to decide, you know what? We're going to put the brakes on. We're done falling away. We're done being this backsliding heifer as the Old Testament called Israel. We are, we're done with that nonsense. We need to fix this. We need, once again, to have a moving of God. We need to get passionate about the things of God. We need to get serious about being obedient. But you see, I believe judgment's going to come. It's going to come because of the church. I believe our world is going to get shook up because of the church because we fell away, because we turned our back on God, and we followed the imagination of our own heart. We okayed sin. We told everybody they could live however they wanted to. As long as they tacked on Jesus' name at the end of it, they would be just fine. We told people that as long as you bowed down once, way back off over somewhere, you can live however you want to. That's not what the Word of God teaches. Not even a little bit. So here today, can I tell you something? I'm gonna try to wrap this up. I've heard folks say that we're just supposed to go tell the gospel, the good news, and preaching against sin. Why, that's not good, good, good news. Can I tell you this? I couldn't know the good news of the saving, the good news of the saving grace of God. I could not know the good news until I knew how bad my sin was. I couldn't know how loving and forgiving and merciful God is until I understand how filthy, how wretched, uh, the stench in the nostrils of God that my sin is. And here today, I want to plead with the church. I want to beg with the church. I believe God has sent me on a mission to begin, amen, to tell the church we need to go back, all the way back to the book of Acts. I'm not talking about back to the 50s or the 60s. I'm not talking about back to the 20s or the 30s. I'm talking about to the book of Acts that we need to return to that place place of walking in the power of God, in the mercy of God, and in the obedience to God so that we can begin to be a light to the lost, so that we can begin to show the world. Judgment came to Israel, not because of the heathen nations. Judgment came to Israel because the people of God turned and turned their back on God. I believe judgment will come to the United States because the church because the church has turned against God. Because the people of God have said, we don't care what you say, we're going to live after the imagination of our own heart. And even worse is we have said that this is a Christian way and that it's okay. Church, we need to do better. My name's Justin. I appreciate you guys watching. Jesus will forgive you if you will repent. If you will seek Him humbly. The Bible says He gives grace to the humble. Don't be, sw don't be swelled up in your stiff neck, in your pride, in your hard heart. But in all your ways, come humbly to God. He'll set you straight. He'll, he'll, he'll let you come back to Him. He, you can repent. He will set you on the direction you are supposed to be. But quit pretending like your sin's all right. Church, let's do better.